Gators Breakdown. Because there's never a dull moment in Gator Nation. Hopping on quick here for an episode of Gators Breakdown as the SEC announces they're going to go to a 10-game in-conference schedule. I am David Waters, the host of Gators Breakdown. Thanks for hopping on here. I am on vacation, but uh, I did hop on uh, Periscope to uh, give my thoughts uh, on this announcement from the SEC. Uh, so I'm going to bring that to you. I just wanted to get some people's questions and um, have a conversation uh, there. So hopefully you guys, uh, look, I know the audio won't sound as good as it usually does in a normal episode, but uh, cut me some slack here, of course, uh, on vacation. Wasn't going to do an episode this week unless the news was like this. Uh, there, so good, you know, almost hour conversation. Uh, some of this stuff has already been answered by uh, AD Scott Strickland, um, Southeastern Conference Commissioner Greg Sankey. Uh, but a conversation, you know, I had right after uh, this was announced. So uh, hope you enjoy it, and uh, look to see you on uh, Gators Breakdown again next week. Thanks. SEC going uh, conference only. Uh, no surprise, really, after um, what we've seen other conferences do, and. You no know, ACC, I don't think they forced the SEC's hand per se. Look, we knew this decision was coming this week anyway uh, from the SEC. They were going to meet, they were going to discuss, and more than likely was going to have um, their decision for college football uh, for the 2020 season with COVID, coronavirus going on. Um, we knew the decision was going to come this week anyway. So I don't think the ACC really forced the SEC's hand in any kind of decision that the SEC was probably not going to make beforehand. ACC's is basically the same, just adding one more game at the end uh, for a non-conference uh, opponent. So many thought that left the door open for Florida and Florida State to still play. But um, SEC decided, nope, we're going 10 games only. Florida Florida State will not play uh, in, in 2020 unless something changes uh, happen. Uh, so the first question from Bobby Alexander, this is important here. Uh, when will the schedule be posted? We don't know yet. Uh, and it will not begin September 5th. Uh, that is not the date for SEC kicking off college football in 2020. Uh, I'll read the SEC's um, uh, release here. Kyle, remind me after I'm done reading about that question. That's something I'll get into. I've talked about that before with Florida, Georgia being in Jacksonville. Uh, I'll give you my thoughts on that uh, in just a second uh, as well. But from the SEC, the SEC has established September 26th as a new kickoff for its 2020 football season uh, to allow its universities to focus on the healthy return of their campus communities and the gradual reintroduction of athletics. As the 14 members of the SEC continue to monitor developments related to COVID-19, SEC Commissioner Greg Sankey announced on Thursday. Um, SEC 2020 football season will be compromised of a 10-game conference-only schedule, and the SEC football championship will be played December 19th at Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta, rescheduled from the original date of December 5th. The schedule will include one mid-season open date for each school and an open date on December 12th for all schools. Uh, so, quote, uh, so that's, that's pretty uh, – so what that tells me right here – um, the, the schedule will include one mid-season mid open date for each school. So that makes me think the SEC, every SEC team will have a bye week at the same time. Mid-season, everybody will get it. So they'll play five games, there'll be a break, there'll be a bye week, and then the next five games. Uh, and then they'll have an open date December 12th, the week before the SEC championship game. So only really two teams have to worry about that anyway. Uh, so for all intents and purposes, the... Season will be done December 5th, two weeks later, SEC Championship. So, uh, quote, this new plan for football schedule is consistent with the educational goals of our universities to allow for safe and orderly return to campus of their student populations and to provide a healthy learning environment during these unique circumstances pre presented by the COVID-19 virus, Greg Sankey said. This new schedule supports the safety measures that are being taken by each of our institutions to ensure the health of campus communities. So, uh, makes me think, they still plan. I was talking to a lot of these SEC schools, I'm sure, still plan on students being on campus. And I think that's why there might be a delay here. Uh, if you're looking at it this way, there might be a delay. And let's see if students returning to campus uh, makes this worse for the football players. If, if, if students return to campus, I'm, I'm not sure, so sure that is decided yet. But I think that's why there is this delay of a couple of weeks of 
if students do come to campus originally, what's going to happen to the football? What's going to happen to these football teams then? Um, so we'll, we'll see. Will there be an outbreak when uh, a student body comes on campus? I think that's to me that's the main reason for the delay from our normal September 5th to September 26th uh, here. So um, the decision to limit competition to conference only opponents and rescheduling the SEC championship game is based on the need for maximum flexibility in making any necessary scheduling adjustments while reacting to developments around the pandemic and continued advice from medical professionals. So never mind. That's why there is a open week December 12th. If they have to make up games, they'll make them up then. So they'll have their bye week on the fifth, uh, or, or after the fifth game of the season, mid about midway, and then they have that December twelfth um, date to make up any other games. I uh, saw so this question asked, and I was going to bring this up too. Then why not start the season earlier? As I said, it, it may have something to do with students coming back on campus, and they want to see the reaction to that first. That that's my fault. That's why I think they're doing it. I agree. I think you should start on normal time, or even bump it up a week. Like some of the big, like Oklahoma's doing, um, go ahead and, and build a buffer in, build in a whole lot of open bye weeks so you can move everything around uh, and try and get everything, get everything, get everything in, get all ten, 10 of these games in. Uh, I agree. I think it should be, you know, probably kick forward uh, a, a bit. So uh, let's see here. Uh, reschedule, uh, rescheduled start to the season will allow SEC to continue to monitor health trends across its 11 state footprint, as well as monitor developments and technology around mitigation and treatment of the virus. Uh, bullet points here for that point are trends in public health indicators throughout the SEC's 11 state footprint, including positive cases of COVID-19, hospitalizations and recovery statistics, uh, state local campus health directives, including restrictions on gatherings, isolation requirements for travelers and other health travel restrictions, continued development of risk mitigation strategy, continued advancement of COVID-19 testing reliability and availability. Because uh, that's the thing. Is this is a big nationwide outbreak again. Are there enough tests to go around for college football athletes? Um, if the hospitals get overwhelmed and you have 85 guys on the football team, you know, 85 versus 85, and they're together, you know, if does it make sense if the hospitals are overwhelmed that you go have a team traveling in to somewhere and going against another team? And, of course, you don't, I mean, you don't, you, don't, you can't predict what's going to happen, but, you know, we'll see there. Uh, uh, it's a continued evolution of time-based strategies for resuming activities after positive test results, uh, including contact tracing, isolation, quarantine environments. Doctors are saying we've seen the height of COVID, Kyle, Kyle Woodward. Yeah, that's true, more than likely, but campus, college campuses also haven't been open. So you don't know what's going to happen once they, once the college campuses open back up and who's going to, you know, who, who's bringing it on campus. Um, hopefully nobody, of course. Hopefully everybody's uh, doing their due diligence and, and being safe about it. But we also haven't had colleges open since this thing has happened. So it could be local outbreaks uh, on the um, on college campuses. Uh, observation of success and challenges presented by return to competition in other sports is one of the other bullet points here. So uh, one of the main points, and I'll get to everybody's asking, a revised schedule for the 2020 SEC football season will be announced at a later date following approval by the conference's athletic directors. So another rumor right now is Florida will draw Alabama, Florida will draw Texas A&M because those are the next two upcoming um, West opponents for Florida that's not LSU, not, you know, LSU's permanent West opponent. The next couple years, Alabama was going to be on the schedule. Uh, a and is going to be on the schedule. Um, that's the rumor that's floating around right now of what the SEC may do to get to 10 games. Um, so if that's the case, if that's the route they go, um, it would be Alabama and Texas A&M added as the ninth and 10th game for Florida in existence to the schedule that already exists besides the out-of-conference games. So no Eastern Washington, New Mexico State, uh, FSU, uh, and, there's, uh, and the other out-of-conference game uh, that was there as well. So we'll see. We'll see how quick they decide on what they want to do. I'm sure not every athletic director is on board with playing the next two opponents. Because what does that mean? If... If you have, if you bring Alabama and Texas A&M to Florida's schedule for 2020, 
What does that mean for the 2021 season? What does that mean for the 2022 season? Does that mean you play Alabama two seasons in a row? Does that mean you go ahead and you go to your 2023 opponent? You move that opponent up a year? I mean, I mean look at it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to sting if... You know, there's gonna be there's there's not gonna be a lot of fans at games this year. Uh, I hope everybody are kind of already assumes that, that that's not gonna happen. Um, I'd be lucky if there's 25 percent capacity in the swamp. So Alabama's supposed to come to the swamp next year. I'm sure fans want to see that. I'm sure fans want to see it in person. If that game gets bumped up to 2020 this year, we're losing out on seeing that game in person. Uh, it, you know, so uh, I mean, I know we all want college football, and this is the way it happens. That's just the way it happens. Um, but you know, I want to be I want to be in the stands with that, with that game in person. You know, LSU was the West opponent this year. I'd love to be at that game too, but we've seen that game before. We, we get to see that game every other year in the swamp. I want to see Alabama in the swamp next year when fans and the swamp can be at one hundred percent capacity and be loud. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't know what you do. I mean, any anybody you throw in those ninth and tenth games, uh, there be there will be some. Uh, negativity uh, thrown about about it. Um, you know, it maybe maybe it's Auburn because they're close. Um, I, I I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know how this, how how this is going to work. We'll see. Uh, but if it if the rumored is the next two uh, West opponents that are on your upcoming on your schedule that are not the permanent opponents, then it would be Alabama and Texas A and M, and that would make Florida's schedule pretty difficult. <laughs> We've touted Florida's schedule being pretty easy as easy as an SEC schedule can be uh, for the most part, you know, with already having LSU and Georgia uh, on the schedule, you can draw Ole Miss, who Lane Kiffin, first year, transition. You'd like to have that, you know, schedule break every once in a while. You know, Florida had to play Auburn and LSU last year. Tough break. And Florida goes one and one in that scenario. Now, uh, you could get LSU again. Ole Miss, those were the two that were already scheduled. Alabama, Texas a and that's three SEC West opponents that are on the top half of the SEC West. Uh, a lot of people have Texas A&M as a top 10 team. They will still have them as a college football playoff team. Or, or, or rank number fifth, my bad. Uh, rank number five. So he has them as a top five team. So Florida's schedule would consist of Alabama, Georgia, Texas A&M, LSU, four top 10 teams, Couple top five teams, if not three top five teams, uh, if you look at uh, some some polls out there. So Florida's schedule would get really difficult in a in a short amount of time. So yeah, uh, you know, I don't know what to think about this. I, I've been a I've been a supporter of more conference games being played. Uh, I don't like cupcake games. Uh, they're boring. Uh, they, they 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 serve their purpose. They they help the little schools. Uh, little schools need that money, so I don't see him going away. Uh, but I mean, I, I'd like to uh, to to um, be there and, and see better games being played. Uh, Brady Gators asked, "What does who does Georgia draw from the West?" I believe it would have been Mississippi State and Arkansas. So there you go. <laughs> That's a uh, oh no no Mississippi yeah yeah Mississippi State and Arkansas. I think, I think that was the two. Uh, so that was. Uh, you know, they catch a bit of a break there. So, in the end, I don't think it's that big of a difference uh, looking at Florida and Georgia's schedule as a whole. I think Florida's would, in turn, be a little more difficult adding Texas A&M, uh, LSU, and Alabama. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, at that point, you got to go play. Uh, so, but I, like I said, I would hate missing on the Alabama game next year. If, if that means... They pick it back up, and, and the schedule stays the same in 2021, 2022. Because, I mean, I know a lot of Gator fans who want to make that um, college station trip in, in a couple of years. Uh, so we, you know, if we play those two teams this year, do we miss out on those two games the next couple of years? I, I, I'd, I'd hate that. Uh, because, you know, the way the SEC's scheduling works, <laughs> it's forever before you play an opponent again, uh, whether it be home or away. You know, Florida-Auburn, all-time great rivalry in the SEC – it was one reason that game was so big last year, not only because it was homecoming, not only because Florida was breaking out special jerseys or anything, but that's an old-time, old-school SEC rivalry. We, we love that game. Old-school Gator fans love that game. It's one of the, the best rivalries in the SEC, and that went by the wayside. You know, so uh, we don't get to play them enough. And now if we have to throw in Alabama and, and A&M to this year and we get to miss that as fans in the stands, 
I, I'd hate to see that. Uh, I, I, I want to be back, um, you know, seeing Alabama next year in the Swamp at 100% capacity with, you know, it being loud. And uh, so see how it goes. Uh, I don't know. I, I think – I don't think – if the SEC had already decided on that, there's pushback on that. I think that is probably the way they were leaning going to the next two um, West opponents and adding those as the ninth and tenth game. But it probably was pushback. And I would, I, if Scott Strickland's one of them, AD for Florida, I wouldn't blame him one bit. Uh, but I'm pretty sure he's not the only one who would have a have, who would have an issue with that uh, as well. So, was well, that all plays out? Um, yeah, we'll, I, we'll get word next week, I, I'm sure, uh, on, on, on that. So if anybody has any other thoughts or questions, go ahead and send them in. I'm going to try and scroll here so I'll miss any new ones um, that come in here. Uh, bu- 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 Let's see. Try not to uh, take so much time here. Oh, yeah, Florida, Georgia. That was another one. So, you know, what happens with that game? I, I brought this up. Um... I brought this up months ago when we first started wondering if there'd even be a season at all. Uh, but Florida, Georgia being here in Jacksonville, as of now, uh, I know just through living in the city of Jacksonville, they, that game's still scheduled to be in Jacksonville. Um, you know, because if, put it this way, if, and if Georgia's designated a home team this year, if they decide to move that game to Athens, what does that do for future Florida, Georgia games? Um, Jacksonville's not going to want to give it up. Jacksonville's probably going to point to the contract that says, "Hey, you got to play here in Jacksonville. This is what this is what you signed up for. And this is what you're going to do." Now, these are unprecedented unprecedented times that we're in right now, and the city of Jacksonville right now could say, "Hey, there's no there's not going to be a lot of fans. We're not going to have our normal cocktail party. If you guys want to move it to to a, a home stadium this year, go right ahead." But if Georgia's the designated home team, I can say Florida. I can see Florida being like, "Well, hell, hold, hold on, we want our home game back in this too." Uh, so that could be the route that we get to a home and home uh, quicker. Uh, I know some fans want that. The um, um, w- w- with that route, uh, who knows? You know, that's the Jack. That's the Jaguar Stadium. They could say, "Hey, we don't want." Um, oh, we'll have a cocktail party. <laughs> that is right, Virgil, but. Uh, uh, I do wonder, uh, this was part of it too, um, the SEC standards on like tailgating and, and, and all that stuff. Um, we don't know what that's going to look like. There could be 25% capacity inside the stadiums. I can't imagine them allowing tailgating on campus. Now, maybe right across the street from campus, people will still sit, set up and tailgate. Uh, but I can imagine campus police putting a stop to, because put it this way, if you're, if you're, if you're already saying we got to go to a 10 game conference schedule and you're saying we're going to have 25% capacity inside of the stadium, that means they don't want people to go. That means they don't want people in large gatherings. Um, so, oh yeah, Bobby Alexander, all right, there's, there's no way a gator walk happens this year. It, it, maybe if they put the barriers way further, further back, but how do you crowd control in, in that? You can't crowd, crowd, you can't crowd control. You can keep people away from the, from the players. But you can't necessarily crowd control that many people who want to line up right there. So uh, I think that would be pretty difficult. I don't think tailgating will happen in the, in the traditional sense as well. Uh, they're going to try and keep people away. I mean, hopefully we get some good news uh, with COVID and coronavirus. I'm just talking about as things stand right now. Hopefully, hopefully some miracle happens, and you know, we maybe by midseason <laughs> we can uh, uh, we can get uh, 100% capacity. Uh, so uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. But Florida, Georgia. I say right now it will still be in Jacksonville, um, but you know, uh, I do have my doubts if, if the game stays here. And, and I can see if it does move to Athens or, or Gainesville, for that matter. Who, who knows? I mean, Georgia is just a designated home team, but you know, we'll, it, it could be easier to move that if, if they need to move to a campus. It could be easier to have the game in Gainesville this year, and then maybe return and go to Athens next year. Uh, we'll, we'll see how all that works out, but. Um, <laughs> I hear you, Robbie. Uh, if it's moved to Athens, you can come stay at my house, buddy. I have a helmet to, to sit by when you sleep. <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll we'll cross that bridge when it gets there. Um, hopefully, like I said, hopefully the game's still in Jacksonville, uh, but we'll see. So, a lot of news. Uh, I know we were all looking forward to this and, and what was going to happen for, for the SEC schedule. Um, 
you know, some teams will have, a, a, I think, a scheduled a little bit of advantage, but that happens every year. Uh, not every year. I mean, look, they're, they're scheduled in equities every year. I mean, Florida has to play LSU every year. Georgia has to play Auburn every year. Uh, so, uh, you know, those two those two teams are traditionally upper half of the SEC West. So it's, you know, it's tougher for those two teams anyway. As you're in and you're out tougher, I think, playing those two teams. Uh, so... Um, do you think testing is going to be an issue? Like, say we get to LSU and trash test positive. Uh, yeah, I still think that's that's another reason why the season is going to be delayed uh, a bit. I still think they want to bring that up. Uh, how, how will they how, how will they assess that? Um, I think if you're tested, you know, positive the week of the game, I think you can forget about playing that game. Uh, it, it's it, it is what it is. Um, <laughs> Did we discuss you working from your uh, working during your vacation? We did, Virgil. Uh, but uh, I did put that disclaimer. If this news come out, <laughs> this would be the only thing uh, that that would bring me out, that would bring me out to to, to work. So, uh, um, get your Mitch Dave, you sitting behind me again. Hopefully, I, ho- I hope that's the case uh, as well. Uh, so, Bob, you're saying if they don't show any symptoms, that's going to be frustrating to the player. Um, I, I do agree, but. I, Look, if they test positive, not the week of, but the week before, and there's no symptoms, I do think there could be a way for them to play. Um, um, maybe there's like a 10-day window instead of a 14-day window uh, or something like that. But I do see it. If you test positive the week of a game, you, I think you could forget about playing that game. Uh, I, I don't think they're going to take any chances with that. Because um, while you may not be showing any symptoms, you give it to somebody else, and they know you test positive, but you go out there and you give it to somebody else, and you know then they can show symptoms, and that's what they're trying to avoid. Uh, it, it's that problem uh, there. So, big big news, uh, of course. Um, we'll see how it all works out. Uh, I would really expect to get that schedule announced next week uh, of who Florida's going to play, home away. I mean. It, I, and I know we assume, um, are we looking at the possibility of no fans? Uh, I think so. Um, yeah, uh, I think there will be some fans, but uh, we're looking at the possibility of no fans. I do think that is a, a, a possibility uh, there as well. Um, where are they going to go next? Uh, too many things. I'm trying to read at the same time here as, <laughs> as, this, as this going. Oh, yeah. I mean, they said a 10-game schedule. They did say... Um, it would be a 10-game schedule they announced at a later date. Look, we all assume it's just going to be the same eight teams that you already had scheduled in the conference play. And uh, how long have they been married? Been married 11 years. Um, I'm trying to get questions in here, too. Uh, but, yeah, we just assume it's going to be the same eight that you already have scheduled and then two additional there. Um, I do think there's a possibility they – could redo the schedule completely. And, I mean, does it, does it really make sense? I mean, look, you just canceled Florida, Florida State. You just canceled Georgia, Georgia Tech. You just canceled Clemson, South Carolina. Does it make sense for Florida to go travel to Missouri just because they're in the SEC Just and you cancel those games? To me, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Now, one reason uh, I, I, I see that is because the conference itself – can handle, look, everybody's under the same testing protocol. So we know Missouri's doing the same testing protocol Florida's doing. We know Georgia's doing the same testing protocol Arkansas's doing. So I think that's that's part of the reason that they know the testing protocols are exactly the same. Um, so you can take care of that. Um, there's another thing here. Um, the uh, ACC went to one division, or no divisions, basically, Um and they're just taking the top two teams. You know, the SEC, they, they just said this is going to be announced later. Everybody's assuming it's going to be the same eight that you already had plus two. Who's, who's, we don't know. It, 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 could, it could change. It could, they could say, all right, we're going to give 10 games, and here's your 10 opponents. Here's your five home. Here's your five away. And it could be based on distance. So for Florida's sake, it would be what, Auburn, because Auburn's the closest campus to, 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 to Gainesville. Um, then um, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina. I mean, there's four. Um, you know, the Mississippi schools. They're kind of there. Tennessee uh, would be up there there as well. Vanderbilt. 
uh, LSU. So, I mean, look, if, if you have a 10-game conference schedule, um, that's you know, 10 opponents, you're, you're one, that's 11, that leaves three opponents that you just wouldn't play. Uh, so would they work it out to where the three that you wouldn't play are the as best as they can schedule this out, the three that are furthest away from your campus? Um, so, look, uh, more than likely, it's going to be the eight that were already scheduled and and uh, plus the two to make 10. But with this later start date, with this September 26th start date, now you already had Georgia-Alabama scheduled, a big game. You know, everybody's looking forward to that game. Georgia-Alabama was, was scheduled before that, um, I think the week before that. Florida-Kentucky was scheduled before that. What happens to those games? Does that Florida Kentucky game now just get pushed back, and, and is your first game now, and everything else just slides behind that, or do they rework the schedule just because you know the, the schedule's already messed up because you can't you, you can't play those games now? Um, so with Georgia Alabama still would you know I think that was the first conference opponent for both teams was would that still be the first conference opponent for both teams? Start there, shift everything else back, or. I think September 26th, Florida was scheduled to play Tennessee. I think that was already on the 26th. Does Florida play Tennessee the first game of the season? Does it, does it start where you were going to be in the schedule, or does it start with your first opponent? Uh, so I think, uh, is the SEC the only conference pushing back the start to September 26th? I think so. Uh, I think we might see some keep their original date. We already saw Oklahoma <laughs> move a date ahead. Uh, to the last weekend, last Saturday of August. Um, and that's two weeks for the SEC, so maybe another conference can start a, a week later. I think they, I don't remember what the ACC said yesterday. I know they came out with their opponents. I don't know if they came out with the exact date. Um, if they did, I, I, I don't remember. Um, I think they may have just stayed put. Um, if I'm remembering right, but I, I, I don't remember. Uh, that part there. So, I mean, a lot, a lot of moving parts here still. I mean, what we did get is conference only, 10 games. We'll get more details next week of, of who. Rumors of Alabama, Texas A&M, maybe, be, maybe a, pre, a bit premature. Um, and we'll, um, you know, we'll see where they go. I, there's just so many moving parts to where this schedule could go, uh, as I just described. So, uh, never slows down. Never a dull moment in, uh, in Gator Nation, in the SEC. <laughs> uh, and uh, we'll go from there. But, I mean, think about some of the – with this, I'm just trying to remember off the top of my head now, the games we lose out because of this. Um, LSU and Texas, Tennessee, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Notre Dame – uh, we're going to play. We're, we're going to get to see Felipe Frank go to South Bend <laughs> and, and go play Notre Dame this year. But we want to get to see that now. Um, the Florida, Florida State, um, you know, Georgia, Georgia Tech, South Carolina, South Carolina, and Clemson. I mean, it's just it's just some games. Not, not just your SEC versus ACC opponents, but you know the big non-conference games that were already um, scheduled for Tennessee to go against Oklahoma and LSU and Texas. Um, but you know now we may get. Florida and Alabama, you know, two teams that are, are picked top five, top ten uh, there. You know, and, 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 you know uh, Justin Wood brings up a good point here. I said distance may play a factor in, in, in the schedule that comes out here, but how many people would love to see Trash versus Franks right now? Uh, we could get that, you know, and, and um, it would, that, that would be fun. That, that, that is a possibility right now uh, with this. Uh, to me, like I said, I've always been a – Add another ninth conference game uh, anyway because I hate cupcake game cake, cupcake games. Um, but this year for Florida, this add name and Bama would be would be tough here. Uh, I'll be all for it. Uh, I love the excitement. I love the big games. There's nothing like uh, a big SEC games, but part of that is because of crowds too. <laughs> so I don't want to miss those games a couple years down the road uh, as well. I saw uh, Notre Dame. Notre Dame is considered an ACC team this year. Uh, that is what they are doing for 2020. Um, uh, I'd rather see how strong UF really is playing all SEC teams. Yeah, I mean, it is a, uh, it, it, it is uh, you know, cream rises to the top. Uh, so, you know, and look, I, I remember going into the 2006 season uh, when Florida won the national championship and looking at that midseason stretch because um, Alabama had a really really good team coming out of 2005 uh, with, with Shula there, and you know going into that season we looked at that stretch of Alabama. 
Auburn, LSU. And I believe those games were back to back to back. Florida comes out with only one loss, ends up going to win the SEC championship game. And I did the national championship game. But man, I mean that was I mean that that was a stretch that was, hey, if the Florida can get through that, then ooh, you know, that'd be a tough team. They got through it and, and went on to play um, the uh, you know, for the national championship and win it. Uh, Bull Gator says playing Bama early with a new QB and coordinator may work. I mean, yeah, I mean, say schedule gets re- gets reworked in a way. Say Alabama has to open up. Say they keep that first game with Georgia. That was going to be their first conference opponent. Say it works out where they have to play Georgia one week and Florida the next week. And, could you imagine Alabama starting zero two in, <laughs> in a scenario like this? Uh, if they do open up with Georgia and Georgia beats them, oh man, I'm not sure I want to play Alabama <laughs> the week after that. That would. Uh, that would, that would not be a, a good scenario there. Uh, but, um, you know, we'll see how it all works out. Uh, there's just so many ways, uh, and we'll see uh, we'll, we'll see the way it goes. But, uh, yeah, uh, would Bama be home or away? It's, I, don't know. I don't know how they'll do it. Uh, probably home because if you're going just by the next two years, that you know, that switch homes in a way anyway. So Bama would be home. Texas A&M would be away um, uh, there. Uh, I'm trying to get these comments here. Let's see. How much of a benefit do you think it would be for you if they had the same coaching staff QB? Uh, very important. I thought that was big going into everything that we were going into this year anyway. We know spring practice, uh, returning quarterback, you knows the system. Um, you would love to get some continuity with all the offensive line, figure out the offensive line. You know, that's what you wanted to use spring for. Uh, but, um, you know, Florida returning in most, of, most of the same staff. You know, Tim Brewster comes in. That was the only change. Uh, there uh, and quarterback coming back, uh, a lot of experience uh, coming coming back. You know, besides wide receiver, and so Florida in the, in good shape there. Uh, Todd Grantham, you know, will usually have a will try out a pretty good defense. So uh, I think Florida had a with, with all the change going on at Georgia. That was just something we've always pointed to anyway. Um, so you know, I, just kind of status quo there. I don't think it really changes too much from what we thought was going to happen with all COVID and, and everything. I uh, like that too. Committee only cares about wins and losses, not much to gain from playing tougher opponents. Uh, that's true, but they're not going to keep an SEC champion out either, I don't think. Uh, with, with a 10 game schedule, uh, sorry, I mean, basically, if you got more than two losses, I don't care if it's a 10 game schedule. If you got more than two losses, you probably don't deserve it anyway. Uh, but I think the committee will they'll take a two loss SEC champion. Uh, no doubt about it, in my mind. Uh, they will take a two-loss SEC champion. You will not keep a two-loss SEC champion with that with Florida's schedule anyway. Now, if you had a, somehow Kentucky goes off and goes 10-2 and they had an easier West schedule, maybe a team like that. But the team with the stature of Alabama, a team with the stature of Georgia, a team with the stature of Florida, you got you play each other and you go through that season with two losses, or then actually it'd be 11 games because you have to still play the SEC championship game. And that's going to be more than likely a Florida or Georgia there. Uh, and then Alabama or LSU or Auburn, Texas A&M out of the West, you're not keeping a two-loss team out. There's absolutely no way going through an 11-game schedule like that. Uh, uh, nah. uh, the committee, I think, they, I think they bend the rules a bit this year. Uh, they, don't, they do care about wins and losses, but also think they care about the SEC. Uh, and that's been proven. So you go 10-2. In an 11 game conference champion schedule, you're getting in the playoff. Uh, no doubt, no doubt in my mind. No. Yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, it's just, just the way I see it there. <laughs> um, all right, let's so see. Uh, about delaying the season, uh, yeah, could allow for all larger crowds too. So, um, yeah, Ed Air uh, says, uh, good, good Georgia dog uh, there. Uh, yep, I think that could help uh, a bit, and um, you know, we'll hopefully we get some fans in the stands uh, a little bit. You know, hopefully at least fifty percent somehow, some way. <laughs> but uh, um, we'll have to see where where it goes from there. Uh, I guess you know to round this out, um, talk a little bit of recruiting. Desmond Watson, big time defensive tackle from uh, down there in Tampa, commits to the Gators and. Look, you guys know if you've followed me enough talking recruiting, I don't really sugarcoat recruiting too much. Uh, it is what it is. This one, this is the one guy that's over uh, underrated. Underrated player. Three-star defensive tackle Desmond Watson uh, out there. Go back and look at all the camp film, all you want to. Go look at his highlights. 
Rivals has him as a four star and um, one of the top 15 defensive tackles in the country, 24 7 sports, a little bit behind on there. I know Blake Alderman from, from Swamp 24 7 thinks really, really highly of him, thinks he should be bumped up uh, on 24 7. Corey Bender at Rivals is a huge fan uh, of him as well. Uh, this is one a lot of people really do agree on should be ranked higher uh, on the composite uh, than he is. Like I said, his composite is uh, pretty pretty up there uh, because of rivals ranking him pretty high out there. But uh, big-time defensive tackle, pure defensive tackle. This is a run-stuffing defensive tackle prospect here. You know, not, not one of those tweeners, not one of those strong side defensive end slash defensive tackles. This is a guy who's going to play in the middle. And your father's been missing that a bit. They have some guys who can move around. And, you know, we'll see what T.J. Slayton does this year. Really came on strong at the end of last year. But still something Todd Grantham's been missing the last couple of years is that true run stuffing, big bodied, you got to run around him defensive tackle. And so if he can create some pressure in the middle, get the backfield, he's quick for his size. Um, you probably you'll have to lose a little bit of weight, uh, of course. You know, maybe maybe a tad bit overweight. Maybe that's what's holding twenty four seven up a little bit. But you know, you get in there and get in this Nick Savage program. He keeps that speed, adds some muscle, uh, gets even a, a bit faster. He's going to be a terror on the inside. Uh, and look, guys, I, I said it. I said it again. I don't sugarcoat recruiting. Uh, and, you know, you guys criticize me sometimes to go going going too far in recruiting uh, about how how much I criticize uh it, it out there and I'm not sure you covered this one this to me this one to me is one of those underrated three-star players out there Travis Johnson was kind of labeled that last year uh kind of rose up through the rankings a, a bit uh, closer to, to signing day last year yeah, but Desmond Watson, I think, a really good need uh, for Florida, filling a big need, as I, as I say, when they need guys in that position uh, there. So uh, you know, kind of fast forward to, to August in recruiting. We'll look at the Palmetto guys and, and Leonard Taylor. One reason Watson's a good pickup uh, there, he can, he can play a true defensive tackle. Uh, Leonard Taylor wants to play more that strong side defensive end role. Probably easier path there at Miami to that. Now that's not the excuse Florida, you know, losing out on him and, and him choosing Miami. Uh, Florida led for a long time in that. We'll see if he chooses Miami uh, coming up. That's where all the tea leaves are reading right now. Uh, we'll see where that goes. But look out for Corey Collier, Jason Marshall, the two defensive backs there in the Miami Palmetto. Uh, we'll see if those two guys, uh, Collier for sure, committing in August, uh, and we'll see what Marshall decides to do. Um, there, if he decides to, to push in, in August uh, as well, um, look out. Maybe uh, flip candidates out there. Um, keep, keep you know keep out. Maybe surprise commit uh, as well. Just kind of keep your eyes open. Commits. Uh, August is gonna be crazy. August is gonna be a roller coaster in, in the recruiting world. Um, you know, we'll um, of course have you covered uh, on Gators breakdown uh, through all that. But you know, pay attention. It's going to be a, a wild, crazy ride. It's going to be a roller coaster. There's probably be some ups. Probably be some downs, and <laughs> we'll go from there. Uh, but you know, big pickup uh, for the Gators today uh, with Desmond Watson, and uh, really, really, really like that pickup there uh, for the Gators. So let's see, um, Stevie, I'll have to go back uh, and listen to that. Uh, Brad, I talked about Florida and Georgia and Jacksonville. Bull Gators says uh, if Florida has Texas A&M and Bama, and has to go to Athens and play UGA. Uh, I'll question Strickland's negotiation skills. I mean, that, that is a part too. If you add that and then have to go to Athens as well, that would uh, that, that that would sting. Uh, but as I said, I think if that happens, you're definitely going to have to get a Florida Georgia game in Gainesville uh, as a uh, as a um, payback. But I don't know how the city of Jacksonville <laughs> will uh, uh, will handle that. Justin Wood says if we landed Collins, Collier, and Marshall out of our permit, are we happy as? Gator fans, uh, I say yeah. I mean, it, like I said, Stinks losing that on Taylor because you, I mean, look, a lot of people want to say, oh, you don't have anybody until they sign or whatever. That's true, but you do lead, you do trend, uh, and Florida been trending Taylor for a while. If there's one team out there that that, that COVID has helped, it's because there's so many prospects down there in South Florida and co- close to Miami. You know, they took advantage, uh, and, and, and good on them for, for, for taking advantage and, and, and being hot and re- recruiting the last few weeks or so. Um, you know, that, that does uh, help a team like Miami, having so many prospects close to them and being in their ear. Um, you know, guys can still go and visit on their own dime on college campuses, and there's so many prospects down there. So many can just go visit Miami on a whim if they want to, and you know, they were able to take advantage of that. 
Uh, so I think that does uh, help there. But yeah, you get me Collins, call your Marshall out of uh, Palmetto. I'll, I, I'd be pretty happy uh, with, with that. Uh, well, Marshall's been one of my top guys anyway. I, I want that, uh, you know, Perry him and Will Coxon out there at, her, at cornerback and, you know, DBU um, keeps, keeps on rolling uh, there. So when are they releasing set schedule? Don't know. SEC, we'll uh, see next week. Uh, I, I think the next week, but uh, no formal announcement uh, on that. Do you think any Gator – let's see, here we go. Crazy Runner uh, says, do you think any Gators will opt out of the season? Um, plans are right now, no. Uh, I think they will all be there. They all want to play. Um, to me, there's only – to me, there's only one that can do that, and that's Kyle Pitts. Uh, he's, I think, first-round talent. I think a lot of people know he's first-round talent. Is If a team out there values a tight end that much, he'll be – probably the first one taken off the board. Everybody else, to me, still needs to prove a bit more. To me, you only opt out if you're a for sure first-round pick. And we saw that with uh, Virginia Tech cornerback who uh, opted out yesterday. Uh, he's not going to play this season. To me, there's no other for sure, sure first-rounders uh, for Florida. Now, can Kyle Trash play his way into a first round as a quarterback? We know how quarterbacks are valued in the NFL. We've seen some guys get drafted in the first round at a quarterback who shouldn't have. Um, and I'm not saying Kyle Trask shouldn't. But I'm just saying, can he improve his stock enough to be one of those guys uh, to you know where he goes in a quarterback run? It happens almost in every draft. There's a, there's a quarterback run. Can he play? But he'll have to play himself into that. And he's not at that. He's not at that right now. So no need for Kyle Trask to opt out. Marco Wilson, um, I think, has been a little too criticized. Uh, but we'll still need to prove a bit more to be considered a first-round corner like C.J. Henderson was last year uh, there. So, no, I, I don't think there's anybody else on the roster who needs to opt out to save himself in the NFL except Kyle Pitts. If he did it, I wouldn't blame him. I mean, don't get me wrong. I hope he plays. I hope 84 is out there. I hope he's catching passes from Kyle Trask. I hope he's scoring touchdowns. If he decided to do it, it'd it stink. Um, I couldn't blame him for doing it. I wouldn't like it. I mean, you know, college football is my love. College football is my first choice. I could really care less about the NFL. I watch it for entertainment, but I don't live and die with every play like I do a Gator game when I'm watching the Jaguars. So, um, yeah, I, I just I want to see my boys in orange and blue stay in orange and blue. So uh, let's keep it going there. Uh, Rico Suave, yeah, man, I'm supposed to be on vacation, but I, I did I did throw it out there that uh, if something like this, <laughs> if Virgil's backing you up on it, I know, guys, I know, I know. Uh, wife and daughter are, are uh, playing a video game together right now, so <laughs> it's uh, I got a little bit of a pass on, on that end of it, too. Uh, but, yeah, I, I am uh, supposed to be on vacation, but I did have the disclaimer. If this news came down, I was going to... Uh, I was going to do this. Go pour a drink. I will after this. Uh, absolutely. Uh, do, do, do. Uh, Martha says, who do you think the late start of the season, September 26th, would be more beneficial for? Um, I, I, I'm i not sure. To me, it's according to what happens with the schedule, uh, honestly. Um, can can you ease into a schedule? Does Florida play their first conference opponent? That was supposed to be Kentucky. Is that their first opponent? Um, or will it pick up right there where Tennessee is? Uh, that's where Florida was supposed to play Tennessee on September 26th. Does it pick up there, or does it get wiped away and there's a new schedule um, format because you're adding two teams? So we'll see. Um, it's too easy, too early to say uh, who it benefits uh, right now and look in, in looking at it that way. Um, but now if you're saying, because now another thing uh, that brought this up to my mind how much more practice time do these teams get now? Um, you, they, they've been working toward this you know, normal Labor Day kickoff. Um, do they get the practice now from from you know, uh, fall camp? Is pretty much going to start next week. Um, so, you know, is it fall camp from here till September twenty sixth? Now, is, it, is that what it's going to be, um, or do they dial it back a bit, saying okay? Um, to me, I think they should just give it to them because you miss spring. All, all these all, all these schools miss spring, so to this to me would help make up for spring a bit. Um, so to me, it would help teams like Georgia, who's going through so much change, and you know they get some extra work time uh, to work on the new offense for Jamie Newman or OJT Daniels to to, to go in there and, and be the quarterback, work with that offense. 
uh, there uh, and replacing you know offensive linemen. The guy, guys have plenty of guys with experience, uh, but need to find a, a way to work those guys in. And it, to me, it could benefit a team like that. It could benefit a team like Alabama who's going through some transition. Yeah, they had some games with Mac Jones toward the end of the year, uh, but you know they also lost a ton of receiver production last year to to go along with Tua. So. They have some question marks there uh, along offense there. So to me, it does LSU all of their changes uh, going on there with quarterback and coordinators and and the like and everybody that they lost going to the NFL. So I do think if they allow them to have a camp like setting all the way up until September twenty sixth, then yeah, to me it benefits teams like LSU. Um, Georgia and Alabama who who were going through some change. But it benefits Florida, too. As you said, this offensive line has to get figured out for Florida. There's at Stuart Reese comes in, and where are you going to play him? Are you going to play him at right guard? Are you going to play him at right tackle? This gives you more time to figure those questions out. What happens at safety for Florida? So while I think it benefits those other two other teams as well, you know, we know there's some questions for, for Florida on both sides of the ball that need to get figured out. So... You know, to me, it benefits everybody, honestly, because you everybody in this spring. And now just kind of thinking through it at the same time, this this benefits anybody. Now, Kentucky could be one team that really benefits because Terry Wilson had that ugly injury last year. And he probably need he needed all the time he could to get healthy. So that's Florida's first opponent. And you were maybe expecting to play a 80% Wilson at quarterback for Kentucky. Well, now he's got a little bit more time to get ready for Florida, uh, the first conference opponent. So Florida and Kentucky is the first opponent, like SEC opponent, like it was supposed to be for both teams on September 26th this year instead of the second week of the season. That could benefit Kentucky. Could benefit a quarterback like JT Daniel for Georgia, who's coming off an injury as well uh, last year. Does that help him make up ground on Jamie Newman in the next month or so? So... Big questions there you know, as far as uh, who, who all this benefits here. Um, uh, where's Bryce Langston at? That comes from Matt there. Uh, it's another one to look out for, um, uh, I think. Maybe uh, maybe on commit watch as well. Some, some guy is one, one player that I would definitely keep an eye on uh, as well. Let's see. The Gators 1205 Pitts gives me a, a team type of guy. Oh, I agree. Um, like I said, he was just the only player that if there's a guy who could opt out for Florida, that's the that's the only one. I think it, I, from this way, that, that question has been brought up uh, around and kind of going back behind the scenes a little bit. I don't think anybody's thinking that. Uh, so I, I expect him to. Uh, looks like um, you know, Dave. Yep, Dave says looks like UF drew the best draw on this. You know, I'll wait and, and, and said uh, there. Martha said they just said on final bomb they're coming up with a formula for the new games. Um, I'd like to see what that formula is. Um, I'll probably go and, and see if I can go check that out. Um, and Bull Gator says by the way, Strickland says Bama Texas A&M rumors are, are totally speculation. See, th- to me, uh, I'll go back to that. <laughs> That's the easiest way to me, and it is an unbiased way. I know it hurts Florida. I know it helps teams like Georgia. But to me, it is an unbiased way to say, hey, here's the blanket rule. Whoever your next two opponents are, here you go. You go play them. But I think to preserve those games as as much as possible so Florida can see Alabama in the swamp next year and go to A&M two years uh, from now, um, come up with something new. Come up with something, maybe teams that you haven't played uh, in the, the longest. Or like I said, I think distance may play a factor here uh, as well. So, you know, if Florida gets Alabama, <laughs> no matter what the formula is, um, it would be a great game. I'd be excited to see it. Um, if Georgia drew LSU at the same time, then let's go. Let's go for it. Um, but, you know, if Florida draws Alabama, it will have time to talk about it. Will it change my outlook on Florida? I don't know. It, it, we have to see where it comes. You know, does Florida open up with Alabama? and Or does Florida get Alabama the week after they have to play LSU? Or does Florida get Alabama the week they have to play after they have to play Georgia? You know, all that kind of stuff factors into it, too. And not just who you play, but when you play them. Do you have to play LSU, Georgia, Alabama, back-to-back-to-back? To back to back? <laughs> or something like that. You know, this is things that we just don't know yet. 
um, it, it, it's, it's just, just going to stay the same or if it gets shuffled a bit. So, as I said, until they come out and say who the opponents are, we know it's 10 opponents, but we don't know. We still don't, they, they could completely do what the ACC did and say, here's five home, five away, doesn't matter what your schedule was before, here are your opponents. Now, their situation was a little different because they had to throw another day into the mix. Um, and that's, you know, that that changed things uh, for them. Uh, would be funny, by the way, to see Notre Dame win an ACC championship game before Miami. Uh, but uh, that's another story. Uh, but uh, that would be that would be hilarious there. Um, so um, do, 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 let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, so UGAD um, says he does not want UF in Athens if it means a full. UF Stadium in 2021. So that's a good point, too. Yeah, if you, uh, if Florida has to travel to Athens because they already designated the home team and there are very little fans allowed at games, that's another thing that's, uh, first of all, it's another thing about this whole season. There's not going to be any home field advantage. The only advantage you have is not having to travel. Um, that's the only advantage you have as a home field team this year. You're not, you're not going to have a crowd advantage. I mean, even if it's 40%, 50%, that's still not loud enough to really deter an opponent. Uh, but, but, you know, to me, most of the time, better team wins anyway. Um, home field advantage, I think, can help if two teams are pretty even. Um, but um, uh, sometimes it can be overblown. Sometimes home field advantage is needed. Last year, Florida-Auburn. Absolutely, there was a home field advantage. Florida LSU two years ago, absolutely home field advantage. But sometimes I also think it can be overblown. But this year, there won't be any home field advantage. So uh, go out there, play your best. Um, but that's it. Yeah, if Florida has to travel to Athens because the game's not being played in Jacksonville, there's not going to be any fans there. And then they got to return to Gainesville. Just say they got to return to Gainesville in 2021. There's going to be a full swamp in 2021. <laughs> there's going to be fans at games in 2021. Uh, so you know, Florida would get a home field advantage that Georgia didn't get to have uh, the year before. So, yeah, that could play into it uh, a little bit. Like I said, I, as far as I know, um, asking around, looking around, paying attention to things happening here in Jacksonville where I live, the game's going to stay in Jacksonville for now. Um, uh, now, of course, it won't be bringing as much money to the city because there won't be as many fans traveling in. Uh, you're not going to have a full stadium. That means you probably won't have... Uh, you know, RV City, um, cocktail parties outside. Uh, there'll be there'll be cocktail parties, um, but you know, at people's homes. Um, some fans, I'm sure, will try to make their way down there, uh, but it won't be the same. It will not be the same. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. That pretty much all I can say right now. There are still so many questions uh, that we'll just have to see uh, where the SEC goes from here. We'll let these ads and these presidents talk. The next, like I said. I would expect next week to get the opponents. Um, a lot of people feel that this announcement came really, really too late uh, as far as what you're going to do. Um, so we'll see. We'll, we'll see where it goes from, from here. Everybody, thanks for uh, hopping in here uh, on this quick little Periscope talking about the, the SEC's announcement. Um, I may turn this into the uh, a podcast episode, too, so people can go out there and, and check it out. It's not put together. Uh, as much as a, a normal episode uh so hopefully you know if you think it's a good idea if i should turn this to podcast to people who couldn't check out uh this periscope uh shoot me shoot me not uh shoot me uh uh a, con- a confirmation if i should put it out there or not uh so thanks for uh hopping on this periscope everybody check out gators breakdown if you had in the last couple episodes as i said what really going to be an episode this week i'll do this may turn it in uh to an episode um, let's go bully Miami fans. That's happened, that's happened a lot, Virgil, the last few days <laughs> on Twitter. Uh, there, so, uh, but yeah, uh, last couple episodes of Gators Breakdown, of course. Just looking back at 2006, 2008 National Championship games with Tate Casey, Brandon James, a lot of good uh, memories uh, we lived w- with those two guys. So go check those episodes out if you haven't yet. Uh, but that'll do it for uh, this little Periscope edition of Gators Breakdown. Everybody go follow me at GatorDave underscore SEC.